Hey guys, welcome to another walkthrough. So this painting you saw, it actually started with another painting underneath, which I just was severely unhappy with. So I just went, right, I got the angle brush and I just scribbled all over the place. Got my color palettes on the side there. So I'm, you see I'm using the Cyberpunk Tokyo um, color palette. And I just started scribbling away. Ideas started to come to me. And you can see I've kind of, again, just really roughly scribbling out this character which is giving me the idea of the way um it's sitting with his sort of its knee up and um an arm on the knee and just sort of leaning looking out over some buildings you can see a cat in the distance there sort of running across the the um the rooftops which actually ends up jumping and moving on to the other side shortly so really was trying to get a massive massive sense of scale with this one um unfortunately i didn't manage it i didn't succeed with it i really wanted to get an absolutely ginormous huge sense of scale where this character although it's in the foreground is quite big in the image i wanted all of that stuff in the background to look just incredibly detailed and built up almost like there was millions of people living in the these sort of buildings that surround and get to this sort of point of light right in the distance but um it kind of reduces and the the, um, the population of this little city that i'm creating here ends up reducing quite significantly but um i was still quite pleased with this one so you can see me experimenting with how i'm going to put windows in it's always quite daunting at first especially when you've got these close-ups um so I'm, I'm messing around with the flat brush um trying to build up the lights but wasn't working so i'm just messing around a few uh a few times until i get something i brought in one of my custom shapes here which again you can download just to get a sense of shape and it really was this custom shape that i brought in that was that that gave a bit more form to the image um it started to give me an idea okay where where am i going with it um and it it sort of built up these areas where the windows were and it gave me a bit more of a sense of uh, space in a, in, in a way as well. Still experimenting, still playing around, but you can see um, the sort of ledges that have been created now with this shape that I've introduced. And I'm just painting in under the areas of the of this shape, which is sort of giving me a bit more, yeah, a bit, bit more um, clarity in the architecture. So there you saw a road has naturally developed quite um, close to this building now. So that sense of scale has just disappeared because we actually feel like we're very, very close to the ground now. Well, not, not extremely close, but, you know, maybe only about five or six stories up. So that huge sense of scale has, has gone. However, just because of the way I was painting, sometimes opportunities show themselves and I see it and I think, well, it's better than nothing. So I'll, I'll sort of roll with it and see where it goes and... and Luckily, that road and, and, that, and that shape actually worked as well. Using the lasso tool here just to add um, a bit more form to each of the shapes. And I wanted to bring in uh, the fill tool as well, which not really the, the, the way I've been doing things so far, but, you know, I just wanted to experiment with it. And so I created a lot more form by cutting out all of these shapes, adding the fill tool, using it to add shape, shading and dimension. And again, it gave me a bit more of an idea of what's possible with this image. And then I'll start painting on top again, adding a few more shapes for detail. But really, when you when you see the final image, you can see it's the it's my paintbrushes that really saved the day because I just really needed an idea. And I think bringing in those custom shapes and playing around with those uh, with the lasso tool there, I was just struggling for ideas. But once I'd got the idea, just brought the paintbrush back in, used it to create a bit of shape, and it started to work. You can see later, actually, I, I do bring in a, um, a stock image or two as well, um, which just, again, just adds a lot more shape and dimension to the whole piece. Creating a little bit of a neon sign on the side here, which you'll you'll see at the end, it starts to frame the image. So I've got neon signs, almost like this is the entrance to this area, which I've I've named District. I think I think I call it District Ten. 
um, and I used a previous uh, one of my paintings as the as the poster girl for that um, for that area. See, I bought in an image here, playing around with a few images, seeing how they work. Not all of them work. Some of them work for texture. Some of them work for a little bit of detail. This one really gave um, the idea of that those shop windows at the bottom, which I really liked. This one I don't think worked too well, so it ends up disappearing soon. I either paint over it or I delete it. And there I see I'm sort of creating a, a sunset in the distance, but I think, again, the colours just didn't work for it. It was, if you saw on my, one of my previous paintings, I said how I just brought in way too many colours and it became messy. This one I was really trying to tone down, so I was very, very careful not to add too many colours to the mix. So you can see I've got like a red, a pink, um, purple, and this sort of a cyan-y kind of blue. So staying as true to that Cyberpunk Tokyo colour palette on the side there as possible. You see me experimenting with a few more custom shapes. Some it is all experimentation, so some work, some don't work. Um, the Windows one I really like because it's, again, it just looks populated it suddenly makes it look like people are actually living there or inside those buildings and doing something i did have a quite a challenge with these foreground buildings for a while because they were just looking like just big masses of or boxes or something like that they didn't feel like buildings to me um there was no detail, the, the shading was off, there wasn't any kind of intricacy to the buildings. And because they're in the foreground, you would expect them to have more detail. So bringing these images in really started to help, again, shape the idea. Here you can see me creating this neon sign. So I'm experimenting, looking at loads of photos that I've got. Um, and I end up, you see, end up settling on this one, which you may have seen before. I call it District 10. So I'm creating it as a separate file and then I'm bringing it in. I, I'm, if I'm honest with you, I'm not quite sure why I did that. I think sometimes my ideas get a bit too messy and I just like to go and jump over to another canvas and just help sort my head out, get a break from whatever I was working on. And then I came back in and then it was sort of like, okay, I can see this painting with fresh eyes and I've also spent a bit more time understanding what I want to do with this sign. You can see the neon signs taking a bit more shape now as well. So it, it was this sort of red blotch on the wall, rectangle. But now because I've actually painted it properly and created it, it's got a lot more shape. My daughter actually wanted me to paint her in. So um, what you saw there was me quickly paint her in just to, so she could see that I was doing something. And then the moment she left the room, I had to quickly delete it because it, it wasn't working. Here I'm adding all the, the light which is being cast on by these neon signs, which is again really helping me to shape this foreground, which I was struggling with at first. So this light being cast now gives me the gave me the idea of okay, this is how these shapes should look, this is how their body should look, and sort of position they're sitting in. In this case, adding a little bit too much detail. Try to experiment by bringing um, an image in of that woman's hair as well, and I just sort of pasted it on top to get a bit of detail, which I think worked quite nicely. What I did really, what I really was pleased with on this image was the the posture of the cat. Um, I liked how liked how poised it looks and sort of ready, alert, and looking out. Whereas um, the uh, woman's character, the character of Anya, is kind of um, a little bit more relaxed. Still not got the size of the elbow right, I don't think. Um, but I think I'm, I think I do play around with it a little bit later. You can see I've added texture to that little sort of overhang bit now, and I've added lights shining, reflecting off the windows with that um, with my soft brush as well. Playing around with a few bit more images trying to get a bit more texture. A lot of them don't work now, so kind of reached um, a pl plateau with the image at this point. 
So I'm kind of thinking, okay, what else might bring something out which I haven't seen, quite seen yet? So I'm still messing around here. There is um, something that will work soon. You'll see I create like a little fire escape here, which I'm doing right now with a little door, which I really liked. It's a very, very minute touch. People probably wouldn't notice it if they looked at it, but it's there and I really, I really, really liked it. It just gave the, a bit more drama to the story. I was just playing around with the colours. So I like to mess around with the, um, as you know, the, the camera raw filter, but there's also a colour lookup table as well, which you can add. Um, I sometimes add the, I think it's called two stripe. I'm also having a look at, I'm comparing my, one of my previous images and seeing how I did the character, how I painted the hair. Because I still haven't nailed this whole situation of just free hand painting. So I'm still messing around with things at the moment. So it's always good to look back. Uh, some of the older paintings to see how I maybe accidentally achieve stuff. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you on the next one.